Welcome back, dear viewers, to a breaking situation of paramount importance. In the tumultuous waters of the South China Sea, the stage is set for an extraordinary showdown that could alter the global geopolitical landscape forever. And in this special report, we're diving deep into the heart of the matter, uncovering the layers of tension, strategy, and power dynamics at play as a U.S. aircraft carrier takes bold action amidst the rising stakes in the South China Sea. The overlapping claims have led to a complex web of alliances, rivalries, and military buildups, creating a high-stakes environment ripe for potential conflict. Amidst this tumultuous backdrop, a formidable player enters the scene at the U.S. aircraft carrier. These floating cities of military might serve as the embodiment of projection of power on the high seas. Equipped with state-of-the-art technology, a variety of aircraft, and a highly trained crew, these carriers can serve as mobile bases, enabling rapid deployment and strategic influence even in the most remote corners of the world. The U.S. Nimitz is one of them. It's a warren of cabins and control rooms beneath an enormous flight deck. It can carry around 5,000 military personnel and as many as 7,000 when you include the accompanying strike force of warships and jets. We went aboard when the ship was docked temporarily in South Korea, but had just completed a deployment in the South China Sea. Deployments like this are routine, but they are undertaken in the knowledge they will be noticed by one power in particular, and that power is China, the U.S. increasingly assertive competitor. Ult Ben Bushong, who served in the U.S. Navy for seven years much of it as a helicopter pilot showed us around. He and his colleagues know things are tense, as they have been for some time. The big picture is helping keep a free and open Indo-Pacific, he said. I would just say we're always ready and we're always training. So if we ever get called, we're ready to respond. And rarely has being ready felt more pressing. The U.S. face-off with China has multiple fronts, and almost all are becoming more fraught. Just a few weeks ago, China's new foreign minister said that if the U.S. does not hit the brakes on what it sees as provocations, then conflict will surely follow. China has increasingly been making a point of flexing its muscles in the seas that surround it. For many years, it has been accused of militarizing islands in the contested South China Sea and engaging in illegal fishing, but recently, it has also been sailing and flying much closer to the self-governing island of Taiwan. There have also been more specific incidents of concern. Just last week, China said it chased away a U.S. vessel that had illegally entered waters around the contested Paracel Islands, a claim the U.S. denied. And then there was declassified footage shot by a U.S. jet of a Chinese fighter flying just feet away from it in a move the U.S. has described as aggressive and dangerous. The reality is that China can now afford to flex these muscles because it has rapidly developed the largest navy in the world, increasing tenfold in just the last 20 years. But it is the reason that U.S. presence here is so important, according to the Rear Admiral Christopher Sweeney who leads the Nimitz's strike fleet. First, we are going to sail, operate, and fly wherever international law allows, he said. And my message to the PRC, People's Republic of China, would be that we're resolute in that. We're not going to be bullied. We're not going to be coerced. And we are going to stay here and fly and operate in international norms. China sees the U.S. efforts here as part of a broader effort to contain it. Fundamentally, it sees this region as its backyard. But in answer to that allegation, the Admiral was resolute. We do not seek to contain China. We do not seek conflict with China. We seek to set international norm that we all prosper from. If fighting did break out in this region, it would most likely be over the island of Taiwan. The self-governing democracy, China sees as its own. China has not ruled out taking the island by force and deterring this is one of the U.S. key objectives. In the meantime, China's increasing assertiveness is pushing many other Asian nations closer to the U.S. and each other. The show of allegiance with South Korea was front and center. 
The two are undertaking joint drills this week and will work with Japan to next month. While much of the tension between the US and China is invisible and covered, this is a region that is increasingly fractured and there is a high-stakes standoff playing out. What has also been getting a slow upgrade is the notion of peace itself. The US is coming to grips with the idea that the end is approaching for the post-World War II era, where it acted as the guarantor of security underwriting the region's prosperity, including China's. China is aggressively asserting its rights in the region, where the US wants to maintain its rights to fly, sail and operate in international lanes, and to keep outsiders at bay. An event organized by the Chinese Embassy to mark Chinese New Year at Gardens by the Bay last weekend showcased glittering court costumes and body armor from the Qing, Tang, and Ming dynasties in a fashion parade. The news of the Nimitz's presence in the region prompted a frown on an embassy official's face. You can't be so cheeky. This is disrespectful. Would the U.S. like it if Chinese ships engaged in similar operations on Christmas Eve? There is always the danger of escalation when superpowers vie for domination. Rear Adam Sweeney euphemistically refers to unsafe, unprofessional encounters, which can put crew or equipment in harm's way. He sets store by process. Our operating procedures are in accordance with the rules. We're always going to default back to the rules. When you do that, you're safe and you come from a higher moral standing," he said. There are other ways to engage on the high seas than through military maneuvers. There is the old-fashioned, profitable path of trade, which has gone on for centuries in the South China Sea. It remains the centerpiece of the region's economy and its diplomacy today. At the Nimitz Souvenir Store, I picked up a coffee mug emblazoned with the ship's motto, Teamwork, a tradition. Reflexively, I turned it over to check the bottom. But what event triggered the intensification of this already tense situation? Recent satellite imagery revealed a significant buildup of naval forces on both sides, sparking concerns of an impending clash. Diplomatic channels strained as high-level discussions yielded little progress, raising the stakes even further. As naval vessels from various nations converge in the disputed waters, tension escalates to a new level. Encounters at sea, Provocative maneuvers and close surveillance are all part of a high-stakes game of brinkmanship. The region holds its breath, aware that a single miscalculation could spark a chain of events with far-reaching consequences. The unfolding drama in the South China Sea goes beyond regional concerns. It has far-reaching implications for global politics, trade, and security. Analysts weigh in on potential scenarios, from de-escalation to worst-case conflicts. Will diplomacy prevail, or will the world witness a showdown that could reshape the balance of power in the region and beyond? As the world holds its breath, we'll continue to bring you updates and analysis on this high-stakes situation. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay informed. And thank you for joining us on this journey through the unfolding drama in the South China Sea.